time is it? Movie review time! Movie review time! Where y'all at? Where y'all at? There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly. <laughs> All right, I, you've probably seen the title of this video and a little shocked because you know I don't like scary movies. Last week I went to saw, went to see, I went to see Annabelle Comes Home. It's a, a sequel. This is actually the third installment of the Annabelle films. And it's about, it's based on a true story, right? A true story about the Warren family. There was this family that said they had the uh, uh, evil doll, a possessed doll. Their doll actually looked kind of like a Raggedy Ann doll. She was a psychic and all that. So it's based off a true story. But this is the third installment. And let me tell you to begin with, I've always enjoyed the Warren stories, the, the, the past stories of the Warren family. I always enjoy the couple played by um, Vera Farming, Farminga and uh, Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson, so both of them, the mom and dad in, in this one, because they had a daughter who was played by McKenna Grace. And I always liked them in the role. I think they're great actors. They always nailed it. And her as, uh, you know, Mrs. Warren, she has those piercing blue eyes. She plays, you know, the, her character is a psychic. She has those piercing blue eyes. And uh, you just, it's believable. It's believable that she's a psychic. She's great in that role. The the Patrick, Moore, uh, Patrick Wilson, he's great in it too. Um, but the problem I had was they didn't show him enough. They, they were in this film, the couple, like, 20 minutes, 20 minutes in the film. Uh, it begins kind of a year after the last one. They have the doll, you know, they're driving in the car, bringing it back to their house. They have this special creepy room where they keep things like that. But even getting to their house was like a whole ordeal. Like the, the car broke down and, and the, somebody's attacking him. And But they finally get it back to their house, the doll, them two. And um, they have a priest there throwing the holy waters on it and doing all that kind of stuff. Well, she's psychic, right? So she's still, you know, they're doing prayers and she's like, the evil's is still here. It's not contained. We need something to contain it. Oh, happened to have some glass panels that came from a church. They put it up, put the doll in there, closed it, lock, you know, did the prayers, the seances around it, did a little lock on there. And then she's like, okay, we're good. It's contained. It's in their room, in their house of all the creepy stuff. They close the door, have do not come in, do not do this, locks on there. And then you fast forward in time and they have a daughter, Judy. Judy's her name, played, like I said, by McKenna Grace, played by who is great. Let me tell you, the acting in this movie, I, I enjoyed it. I, I thought everything was believable, especially McKenna Grace. She plays their daughter, younger version. She's, um, or like eight years old, eight years old, I think, in the movie. But yeah, she goes to school and and it's, and it's well known, like her, what her family does and what her mom is, like a psychic and all this. And, and the kids kind of make fun of her and they think she's weird. And uh, she's having a birthday and nobody's coming to it, like a birthday party. And everybody's like, I'm not coming, I'm not coming. Uh, but she does have kind of like a sidekick, her babysitter, in fact, her babysitter, who uh, shows up and, and is kind of right there, you know, a great babysitter, it seems like. They have a close bond. But that's what I said. The acting of this is believable. But the Warrens decide to go out of town for a few days, leave their daughter at their home with the babysitter, with the evil doll, with the evil doll, and and uh, think things aren't going to happen. Think things aren't gonna happen. You're gonna leave the babysitter there with the evil doll. Well, everything would have been fine, but then of course, the babysitter is gonna have a friend who wants to stir up some trouble. And at first, the friend gets on your nerves, but you find out, you find out later, like she has like a, a backstory and it's kind of sad, and you grow close to her, and you're, you know, you you feel her why she did what she did, and she's, you know, so you're not so mad there. But this is this is the problem I have with this movie. They had a lot of jump scares. Oh, they had jump scares that'll make you, you know, almost poop in your pants. They had a lot of that. They had uh, creepy parts. But number one, I felt like this movie wasn't needed. We already knew the story of the doll. 
We already knew the things that, that happened with the doll. Why did they want to bring this movie? Like, the Warrens aren't even in this. You don't really get any kind of history behind it in, in, that we already didn't know. And th it just, the story just felt, felt kind of rushed to me and like thrown together. Like, let's make another Annabelle movie. Let's throw it together. I, I thought it was an unneeded movie. I thought it was an unneeded movie. On top of it, they had a lot of jump scares, but I even felt like some of the creepy stuff was rushed. I felt like that. Now, James Wan did come back in this film. James Wan did come back, not as like the full-time director, but he was like, he helped out on some of the scenes and some of the scary scenes was well done. And you can tell that James Wan had a, a, a part in it. Like there was this one scene where Judy, the daughter was in her bedroom. Uh, the Annabelle doll was already let out, um, haunting them in the house. And they have this one ghost like who was a bride where's the but she's like haunting her in her room and the scene was done perfectly because they had this lamp or this kind of like a kaleidoscope lamp that changes colors and it was knocked over and and just the cin cinematography in this in this one scene I was just like it made everything super creepy like it built up the anticipation it was perfectly shot but there wasn't enough of those there wasn't enough of those. And that's when I said, I felt like a lot of the, the spookiness and the scariness was rushed. I felt like it was rushed. And on top of it, I felt like there wasn't a need for this. One thing I did, another thing I liked about it, like I said, I love the acting, some of the creepy parts, it was definitely jump scare. But another one is, I always love when a movie throws in humor. This one, I mean, one minute it has you on the edge of your scree seat screaming, trying to cross your legs not to pee on yourself because you're so scared. And next minute you're like laughing. They have, they threw in a neighbor of Judy. So as a neighbor, and the babysitter's there, but he has like a crush on the babysitter and she has a crush on him and he decides to come over that one day. I mean, he doesn't stay because she's a very responsible babysitter. But just that whole you know, mix with him in it and the haunting stuff. And it brought a lot of humor. It brought a lot of humor. That's why I said that you're laughing. You're like, this is a scary movie, but I'm over here laughing too. So I did like that that was thrown in. But overall, it, it felt short too. The movie felt short. That's why I said they could have extended this. They could have extended the creepiness of it. They could have built up the anticipation, but it felt short and rushed and not needed and not needed so I know y'all are shocked I went to see the Annabelle movie I'm still having nightmares over it though because <laughs> that doll will never get out of my head <laughs> that doll will never get out of my head but I give it overall like two and a half out of five and it's not even for my bias and not liking scary movies I just thought it was it was one of those like eh, I could maybe wait till it comes on cable not one of those that I have to see it, that rush to the theater to see. If you like the Annabelle stories, then you'll like this. It's another uh, continuation of it. Um, but yeah, that's my review. Now remember, I'd like to hear your thoughts, comments, thumbs, give me all that subscribe, notification bells, follow me on my Instagrams, Geekly Amanda, same on Twitter. And until next time, bye y'all.